Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday live stream. A lot of stuff to get into, so let's just jump right in. So first of all, yesterday's video, I have to tell you, I did not have much hope for it. I thought there was going to be a lot of uh, thumbnail investors and just take a look at it and go, why is this guy taking profits? And not watch the video and understand that I was taking profits on specific altcoins and why I was doing it specifically because I was buying for other assets, more specifically an apartment complex and uh, that I didn't sell Bitcoin per se, but this is just a long-term play. And I didn't even take all the profits. So uh, again, I, I wanna thank everybody for actually watching the video and not just commenting. It was great. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you for doing that. And uh, I have to tell you that as I was going through this process of you know, selling these altcoins, and then of course you have to you know, send those, to your, those profits to your bank at some point, because the bank's not gonna, Sit around and go. Oh, we'll take uh, bonk for uh, for for this for this real estate uh, endeavor. No. So uh, I learned a couple of things about uh, dealing with uh, Coinbase and how to transfer uh, funds, whether they be stable coins or they be cryptos, using the advanced options. And I did a uh, uh, a thread. So I linked this in the description. And it's just it, it's exactly how you're, you're going to save yourself a boatload of money and fees uh, for a lot of different ways. So just. Uh, check that out. Links in the description. But let's get into it today. So today, pretty good day on a Saturday. I mean, we had a little bit of a pullback. I mean, we had a marvelous run. I mean, congratulations. It was pretty good. I see more upside coming later. But again, I don't really see a ton, uh, you know, a massive, massive blow off top bull run until after the presidential election. And as we go into 2025, but uh, pullbacks are normal. Pullbacks are uh, healthy. And Bitcoin's down, you know, 1% for 24 hours, whatever. And we can see a little bit of red, but not too bad. Uh, we'll see what happens on Sunday, but that's what we have. So what I was doing is I was taking a look at, because a lot of these things are being pushed around by, of course, traders. And a lot of those traders are doing leverage. And a lot of those leverage plays, they do well, they don't do well. They get liquidated, bots pull, pull in. But what I want to take a look at was the long-term play. And this was uh, an article. This was over 10 years ago. And it's from Market Watch, and it talks about the Global Gold Exchange uh, Trader Products, or ETPs. And it talks about on March 28, 2003, the first gold-backed ETF developed by ETF Securities was launched. That was a long time ago, 2003. And then, of course, this is what it did in that decade or so. And we can see it's a nice upward trajectory. Since its launch, interest in gold has grown astronomically as prices have jumped to $1,600 an ounce from $300 at the time of launch. So $300 here, 10 years later, $1,600. That's a great return. That's a great return over a decade. I don't know if that would uh, fall in line with the S&P 500. I believe it would, uh, would actually exceed that. But today it's even better. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, I'm pretty sure that gold is at an all-time high as far as the spot price. All-time high today. And a lot of these things were actually brought about by the simplicity and the ease of using an ETF or an ETP. And people, institutional investors, investors could just go in there. They wouldn't have to hold it. They wouldn't have to have any kind of custodial services. It would just be like, hey, here's an ETF. We'll buy it. We'll hold it for you. You know, we're going to pay some fees. But that was the comparison between uh, Bitcoin, uh, ETF, and gold. So where are we? How are we doing? Well, we're crushing it. I mean, there's really no other way to say this. This, I saw this and I was like, okay, things are going to do. I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be all right. This is from uh, Nate Garazzi. I think that's how you say his name. Garazzi, what a great name. President of ETF Store, host of ETF Prime, co-founder of ETF Institutes. Uh, this guy knows about ETFs, I'm pretty sure. And he's just saying, look, look, uh, here's a chart. Cumulative net flows into physical gold ETFs versus spot. ETFs, gold launch in 2004, 2003, whatever. Bitcoin ETFs in 2024, 20 year head start for gold. But wouldn't be surprised to see Bitcoin ETFs surpass them in the next two years. There's a reason. People talk about scarcity. Gold is scarce and Bitcoin is scarce. That's incorrect. Bitcoin is not scarce. Bitcoin is finite. There's a big difference between scarcity and finite. We can always we can find more gold, and especially if we go there and start mining asteroids, I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying you could. And it's still scarce, but then the scarcity could actually rebound upon itself. But with Bitcoin, it's 21 million. That's pretty much it. 
roughly a million is locked up in Satoshi Nakamoto's wallets. I don't know who that is. HBO thinks they do, but uh, I think they're totally wrong. And it's finite, never more than 21 million. And people say, well, you know, the, of course, miners and the node operators, they all get together and they can vote for it and it can be 21. Million. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Even all the different e Bitcoin products that are out there, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin P Tomato, well, I don't know, whatever, whatever is out there. All of them do the same thing. It's 21 million cap and that's it. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, it's just gonna take a while for people to, to warm up. Now I know you're you're tired of hearing that, but look, this is where it's at. I think it's gonna do quite well over time, but we'll see what happens. And as an also reminder, I mean, look how well we're doing. Well, how's that compared to today for the net Bitcoin ETF flows? We just talked about this yesterday. And again, we hit an all time high. The net Bitcoin flows, again, inflow, outflow, flows, is at 345,000. That's an all-time high. Ethereum, I unfortunately have to tell you, is not doing so hot. So Ethereum is still negative. Now it had a nice had a nice flow on uh, 17th, but even with that 48 million, it's still negative 467. So I know people talk about Ethereum, you know, just just wait, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. I'm holding still a little bit. We'll see what happens, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But, you know, it's not all good news. And if I give you nothing but good news, uh, you just, everybody becomes moonish. And that's just not how it's done. You have to take a look at the, the counterparty risk and think to yourself, okay, well, not everything will go up forever. This is a great post from Washer Guru. He does have a, he or she or they, I don't know who it is. They have some pretty good data. You should follow them. And one of this was unrealized losses at US banks are seven times higher than during the 2008 financial crisis. Now, I don't know what kind of crazy mortgages they're doing. Hopefully they have a little bit more due diligence than what they did in 2007, eight and nine, but they are at a loss and this is pretty big. So when I take a look at this, there's two ways you can look at this. Okay, banks will probably collapse at some point. Or will it be just a too big to fail type of thing? Because remember what happened over here? We had a little bit of a, of a drop down. And then of course, now is the, in this 2018, 19, 20, this was of course during the uh, coronavirus. But when we had this collapsing, what happened? Well, the government still took up and said, you know what, we're not gonna let you fail because you were too big. We're gonna start printing money. And once that, and then of course we're gonna give you stimulus checks. Is that gonna happen again? I don't know about the stimmy checks, but I can tell you as far as like the money supply, it uh, doesn't look too bad for us. And this is why you're gonna hear this term. Remember this term, melt up. You're gonna hear this term a lot, especially over the next year, two years, three years or so. And then I think there's gonna be a pretty big collapse. I don't know when that's gonna be because I don't have a crystal ball, but first thing goes with this. America is gonna choose inflation over deflation. And they're gonna start printing dollars. And they've been doing that since, what is this? What is this? April, 2023 to August. You think this would update? I'm gonna have to tell Ben about his site. Anyhow, uh, we're at 21.75, not the all, all time high, but you know it's gonna happen. And that's just what's gonna have to be. And there's this thing called the Cantillion effect. And what that means is that the money that gets printed goes into the hands of uh, the big boys and girls and the banks and the millionaires, billionaires, and they get the money first and they buy assets and then it kind of filters down to the plebs and we get the scraps. So right now, this is one of the few times when you can get your hands on real assets that are completely finite, not scarce. And you can set yourself up some for some pretty good progress or some pretty good gains as time comes on. Now I can't give a financial advice. I can't tell you what to get into, but I can just tell you, this is what the history shows and this is where things are going. And I just, I look at this and I'm like, this is just gonna repeat all over again. And we're gonna, we're gonna print like crazy. The market's gonna rally. Everybody's gonna think that it's never gonna go down and then it's gonna collapse and then people are gonna cry. And then I can, well, I won't be here at that point. So that's just what we have. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I could be totally wrong. But then also, I just want you to, to, to take a look at what do you notice about some of these big gains? 
this is from Coin. This is from well, this is going back to Coin Gecko. And I just found it funny. I took a look at this. The largest gainer in the last 24 hours was something called women, woman yelling at cat. This is, of course, they're all meme coins, right? You know, the uh, uh, actress who's yelling at the cat and the cat comes back. And it's just memes, right? That's just what it is. Trending, Simon's cat is down 12. I don't know what that is. Phil, 24. I don't know what these are. All these things, I don't know what they are. But essentially, they're all meme coins. And I thought to myself, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm missing it because, correct me if I'm wrong, did everybody get it perfect last time in the cycle when they sold? Did everybody get it perfect to understand about how big NFTs could be, even though they were potentially worthless? Maybe I'm missing it. And um, I'm not too proud to say that I am not 100% perfect all the time. And I listen to you guys. And I listen to when we do the Q&A and you guys tell me, hey, check this out, check that out. And when I have time, I do. There was a great video, and it was called the Super Cycle, Meme Coin Super Cycle. And I'm just going to have you listen to the first 40 seconds. I link this in the description. And what his name is Murad Mudov. Mumadov. I hope I said it right. What he says in this in this clip makes a boatload of sense. Just this part. And if you go through the whole 20 minutes, I'm actually at like 16, 17 minutes. I just shut it off. I go, that makes total sense to me. But I want you to take a listen to this because I don't want you to be left behind. Let me make sure you can actually hear it the correct way. Make sure the volume's good. Listen to this first 40 seconds. Check this out. I'm here to talk about the meme coin super cycle, why it's happening, and why it will continue. So the meme coin super cycle is not just a prediction about the future. It's already happening. If you look at the year-to-date performance of all the major crypto categories, they are a mixed bag with a lot of disappointments and a lot of under, underperforming tokens. But if you look at the bottom right of the screen, you will see that meme coins in particular are dominating uh, in terms of outperformance right now. Old memes are doing well, and new memes are doing particularly amazing. The era of all crypto assets moving up in unison is over. Um, we're all going to make it is dead. This is a natural step in the evolution of the space. Um, if you look at the first three pages of CoinMarketCap, you will see that only 43 tokens have outperformed Bitcoin year to date. And does any category stand out? You will see that 13 out of the top 20 are meme coins. Okay, so that's just where he gets into it. But he talks a lot about and he compares meme coins to altcoins. And he talks about how there's some pretty big manipulation going on by the VCs because they get in, and we all know this, right? We all know this. The VCs get in super early. They get their tokens at a fantastically reduced price. They let the people do their job and it hits mass marketing. And before you know it, they're up 110, 20, 30, 100 X. And he said, one of the big things that you can see is that people believe that they're trying to tell you that meme coins have no value. They do. And he talks about, I hate to, you know, this is always a joke, but it does make a lot of sense. Talking about community, talking about a sense of, of, uh, of belonging, and then talking about how you can rally around one product, even though it really doesn't do too much good. And he said, and he compared it to the last cycle of the NFTs and of course, meme coins. So I take a look at it, I'm like, maybe I'm missing something. Anyhow, I want you to watch this video. And I want you to tell me what you think about that and if you missed anything or if we missed anything because I'll be damned if I miss out something that could be potentially huge. And that's a gamble, don't get me wrong. But is it? I will say this. If you want to take a look and, and dive in, and we'll get a Q&A in just a second. If you want to dive into this, just go to CoinGecko and you can click on, like, well, the, well there's, there's categories and there's one, the pump fun ecosystem. And when you click on that, you can you can um, filter out like profits is and the last 24 hours, six, one hour. But one thing you have to be be aware of is that see this thing called liquidity. If there's low liquidity, it doesn't matter how much this goes up, you will not be able to take it out. So there are certain parameters. I don't know what those parameters are, but I can tell you right now, if you've got liquidity at 258,000, good luck getting your tokens out. 353, 203, so on and so forth. 
there's people way better at this and I'd like to probably get some of those people on the channel. But also you can do this, go to categories. Ah, damn it. I always do command F and look for stuff because I'm too lazy. And you look for memes. Let's take a look here. Ah, category number 18, memes. And how are we doing? How about this? Over seven days, look at this stuff. Now we're talking. I don't know what the heck Klaus is, but 24 hour volume, 4.3. Doesn't seem to tell you liquidity though. That's just volume, that's not good. Dolan Duck, 509%, 309%. Woman yelling at cat, 291%. I will just tell you this. All this stuff is risky, but watch this video and he kind of tell you like what to watch out for. One of those is, you know, have they dropped 70% or more twice? How big is their community? And uh, what does it stand for? And I can get behind that. And lastly, lastly, I almost forgot about this. Uh, there's voting going on for the top creator for in, uh, in a, or excuse me, in Web3 department. This is at uh, games, gam3s.gg. I link in the description. If you would be so kind and vote for one of your uh, most favored Web3 uh, influencer, I only know like, well, actually four. I know Icy and Stash and Kagi. And there, there's, there's, there's Jesus Martinez. And uh, I, I don't know Smirnok, but he looks like Stash's Russian twin brother or something. Well, I don't know him, but but if you want to uh, vote for those guys and, you, and you've seen them on the show, uh, go right ahead and they can get a nice little award. And that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Uh, if you subscribe, uh, don't hold your breath that uh, YouTube's going to notify you because they won't. The best place to do that would probably be Twitter or X, as the kids call it now, and you can uh, get notifications over there. Now, if you want to stick around, I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities. We'll go from there. But if you got to take off, take off. I appreciate you for coming on a Saturday. Thank you.